Now it's time to practice and build upon the knowledge acquired in previous lessons. For that, we will build a destruction-ready procedural building. This asset will be very useful to create future destruction scenes and to very rapidly create a huge amount of different buildings. Usually the first thing I do before I start to build a tool like this one is try to imagine all the parameters that will be used. For example, in the case of a building, how many stories will the, build, uh, will the building have or how high will these stories be? So let's first create a geometry node. Let's call it procedural building and dive into the node. So to create the user interface, I will use a null node. Let's call this node controls. And we can change the color and even the shape of the node. So I'll press the C key, change the color. And then I'll press the Z key, change the shape. I can press the Z again to close the picker. And I will again click on this gear icon, edit parameter interface. And I can hide these two parameters that I won't use. So I will select them and click on invisible just to hide them. So probably the most important control that I will need for the building is the number of stories that it will have. So in this case, we will use integer values. So I'll click on the integer parameter click on the right arrow and first of all let's label it accordingly so let's label it stories and the channel name will also be stories and I'll accept for now so notice now I have this control but the default value is zero. So we will never build a building with zero stories. That will be of no use. So I will change the default value. Again, I will click on the gear icon, go to edit parameter interface, select the parameter I want to change. And here under the channels tab, I will find the default value. So let's make a default of four probably six is fine and go back to the parameter channels and here we we can input a range that can be selected for example uh, let's use a minimum value of one and lock this value we know we will never be uh, we will never go below one and for the high value we can use probably 20 or 40 let's use 40 and accept. So now the default is six. We will never be able to go below one. And we could go over 40. For example, if I type a number above 40, we could change that value. Or I could middle click and drag with my ladder to, to go higher than, than 40. But again, this is just like a starting point I can control and middle click to revert back to the default. So the base of the architectural design is called a grid. Usually the grid lines will define where will the columns lie, as well as where will the beams will be and walls and many other features of the building. Also, if you think of, of a three dimensional grid, uh, the, the height grid lines will define the height of the story or the placement of the slabs in the building. So let's start by generating those parameters for our interface. I will click on the gear icon, go to the edit parameter interface, and let's create those 
uh, parameters. So I will add a new float value. This one will be for the story height. Or the space between each slab. The name of the channel will also be story height. Notice how I'm avoiding uh, spaces when I when I create the channel name because channel names won't accept uh, spaces. So instead, I will use just um, I will use camel casing. So I'll go to the channel uh, defaults and I'll make the story height uh, four meters. So between three and four meters is is a realistic height for a for a story building. And in the range, I will lock to two meters. We will never use less than two meters. Actually, usually a door is 2.2 .2 meters, 2.1 meters. And um, let's leave the maximum height as, as it is, 10 meters is fine. And we will create another four values. One for the number of lines actually this can be an integer so i will look for an integer value and we'll label it grid lines width same for the channel name grid lines width and uh, uh, you always want to create a default value. So I will, it will be a value of five and a range minimum of two. We will never use less than two lines. And create this time a float value to define the distance between each line, or in this case, the span between each grid line. So we'll label this grid span with same for the channel name grid span width. So as a default, let's use four meters. Four meters for a distance between columns is fine. And give it a range, a minimum of say one meter and now we can copy these values you can select a value and press d to duplicate it i will just move it downward and label this grid lines depth I'll change the, the default to, say, 6. And I will also duplicate the span with, move it downward, and we'll call it span depth. Same for the channel name. And I will use the same default and click Accept. So now our main parameters are ready. And I think we are ready to start creating some geometry.